The following is a summary of the Sicha of Shabbos Parshas Nosei Tov Shin Nun Aleph. That Shabbos was the Shabbos after Shavuos. Shavuos that year was on a Sunday, and consequently Shabbos was Yud Beis Sivan, the Shabbos after Shavuos, Parshas Nosei. And consequently, the theme of this Sicha is going to be focusing on the special nature of the Shabbos after Shavuos. The Shabbos after Matan Torah, we have the full elevation and completion of the giving of the Torah. Shavuos, that year was on a Sunday, and the Shabbos afterwards was Yud Beis Sivan, the 12th of Sivan, which was after all the Yemei HaTashlumin, the days of filling in the sense that in the Beis Amikdosh, they would be able to bring the offerings of Shavuos all those days through till the 12th. And consequently, <clears throat> Matan Torah, if you want, culminated in full on the 12th of Sivan. Also, the Parsha Sashavuah, Parsha Nosoi, the idea of Nosoi is Nesias Horosh, lifting up the head. And the principal way the head is lifted up is through Limud HaTorah, Torah study. And that lifts up not just the head, but the entire body, including the feet, which in a spiritual sense means how a person acts, all their deeds being for the sake of heaven. And so, the Torah actually begins Nasias Reish B'nei Gershom, specifically about the lifting up of the heads of the census of the children of Gershom. And the actual wording in the Torah is Gam Heim. They were also counted in addition to the B'nei Kahos. And the inference here is that through the counting of the sons of Kahos, who were the bearers of the Oron, the Ark, which had the tablets inside it, so automatically through the lifting up of the head of Limodatora created also a lifting up of the Bnei Gershon. They carried the curtains and as explained later in the Sicha, that was the idea of the elevation and refining of the world. We also start reading again Pirkei Oves. We read Pirkei Oves in the six weeks up to Matan Torah, and now we're going to start reading the summer cycle of Pirkei Ovis. So the difference between the two is the Pirkei Ovis before Shavuos was a preparation to Matan Torah, whereas the Pirkei Ovis after Shavuos is Pirkei Ovis as a result of Matan Torah. And of course, therefore, we have an more emphasis in Moshe Kibel, the idea of receiving the Torah, raising many students, Hamidit Talmudim Harbei, and the end of the period where it says, Al Shlosha Devarim Ha'olam Oymed, on three things the world stands, the Kiyum Ha'olam, the establishment of the world, and in fact a new world as it's created through a new engagement in Torah study. So consequently, putting all that together, the idea is, is that on the Shabbos after Shavuos, you have Hishachos, a new release of energy and of chayas in Torah learning, which thereafter brings about a hischachas, a new perspective and experience in the world. So let's explain that more at length. The Torah says that Harsina Bachedesh Ashlishi in the third month, by Yoim Hazer Bohumid Bar Sinai, on the third month they came to Midbar Sinai. And the word used is Bayom Hazet, on this day they came. It doesn't say Bayom Ahu on that day. And Chazal tells us, Bayom Hazet, we should treat every day as if this day we've received Torah anew. In other words, every single day, we should view Torah as if it's been given to us new by the Noisein HaTorah. We actually say the Bracha Baruch HaTor Hashem Noisein HaTorah. Blessed are you Hashem, the giver in the present tense of the Torah. Torah is given anew every single day. And since Istakel Bo'iraisa Ubara Alma, since Hashem looks into the Torah and creates the world, if there's a new Torah every single day, there's a new world every single day. 
However, what we may do is to look at it in its klau and its prat, in its general and its detail. Just as on Shavuos, we have the general renewal of Torah, and thereafter, every single day of the year, a detailed renewal of the giving of the Torah. Similarly, also in the world, we also have Rosh Hashanah being the general release of energy for the entire year, and thereafter, every single day, each day being something new. And of course, that renewal has to be with renewed energy and pleasure. However, there is something additional in connection with the Shabbos, which comes after Matan Torah. In other words, in addition to the new general renewal of Torah and the renewal of, if you want, worldly energy, which is released because of that, there is something special about the renewal that takes place on the Shabbos after Matan Torah, which is even above and beyond what happened on Shavuos. So we're going to highlight here the nature of the Shabbos after Shavuos, even contrasted with what happened on Shavuos itself. <clears throat> so the explanation is as follows. There is a chidush, there is a novelty that takes place on this Shabbos, even over the chidush, the novelty that took place on Shavuos. Let's start with what happened at Matan Torah. The whole Torah was given on Sinai. Matan Torah won't happen again. Everything, Torah Shabbat Shav, Torah Shabbat Peh, written law, the oral law, everything that even a seasoned student, a Talmud Vosik Osid Lachadish, is going to bring out in Torah, it was all given <coughs> at Sinai. What is the explanation in that? Why is it that many generations after Matan Torah, when a student comes out with a chidush in Torah, that was also given at Sinai? The answer is, what was given at Sinai were klolim, general principles. And using those principles, the student derives from those principles and arrives at a chidush, something new in Torah. And thereafter, because there is something new which is brought out in Torah, there's something new which is brought out into the world. Now, ultimately, if we fast forward in time, if when Mashiach comes, Torah Chadosha Mi'iti Teitze, there will be a whole new level of learning in Torah, as if it's a completely new Torah, because it's going to go forth from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Mashiach will reveal a completely new level in Torah. So, as a result of that, we can understand that there will be an Eretz HaKadosh and HaShemayim HaKadosh. As Yeshayas, Isaiah says, there'll be a new heaven, a new earth. <clears throat> it will be a different world. In other words, in addition to the fact that on Shavuos, there's a renewal of acceptance of the Torah that was given at Sinai. In addition to that, there's a, an additional Chidush. And that is a chidush both in a Torah and in Shemayim and Oretz that is going to, that came, that was given by Matan Torah, but which will be revealed in time to come. How do we explain this? The mission in Pirkei Ovis says, Kol mevi Somebody who says something over in the name of the person who says it, brings redemption to the world. What is the connection between the two? When somebody has been mechadesh in Torah, when somebody has drawn a new novel concept in Torah, what has happened is, is they've taken a concept that was already given at Sinai, but which was behelem, it was concealed, or to use a different uses of language, it was in Golos, it was in exile, and they redeemed it by revealing it. And consequently, this gilui hahelam, this revelation of that which was concealed, is the concept of redemption. So where do we actually learn that from? We learn that from Esther and Mordechai. Batomer Esther Lamelech Bashe Mordechai. Esther told the king in the name of Mordechai, and she brought redemption to the world. But that was 
a specific redemption in the times of Ahasuerus, although we still remained the servants of Ahasuerus. The reason being because there wasn't a full redemption in Torah at that time, and therefore that didn't precipitate into the world. However, when there will be a full redemption in Torah, a full revelation of all the Torah that was given at Sinai, that will take place when Mashiach comes, a Torah Hadosh Amiti Teitse, a new Torah of Mashiach that will go forth, that will automatically cause a new heaven and a new earth. That doesn't mean to say that we won't have heaven and earth as it is now. The novelty in heaven and earth will be that we will recognize the one who made it. In other words, the world will be full of knowledge like the water of God, like the water covers the sea, which is a Pasuk in Yeshua, and the Rambam brings it at the end of Mishnah Torah. That's going to be the new heaven and the new earth, the new reality which will be visible in the world, precipitated by the revelation of the Torah of Mashiach, because everything that happens in the world comes and happens first in Torah. And even though by Matan Torah, Shavuos, there was the Bitol Hagzeda, there was the nullification of the degree that the uppers couldn't descend to the lower, and the lower couldn't elevate to the upper, however, what was revealed was only part of Torah at Sinai, and only later in history, when Mashiach will come, will there be a full revelation of Torah, which will result in a full revelation of identity in the world, that people will be able to see a new reality, and hence a new heaven and a new earth. With that concept, we'll be able to understand specifically what happens on the Shabbos after Matan Torah? Because the Shabbos after Matan Torah in <clears throat> microcosm represents the glimpse, if you want, of the world to come, which is the whole concept of Shabbos. And therefore, on this Shabbos, we glimpse that moment where new Torah will go forth and hence new world reality. And that's emphasized in both the Parsha, the Pirke Ovois, and the year which we're in. So let's start off with the Parsha. Nosoi Esrosh, we mentioned beforehand, lifting up the head, renewed energy in Torah learning. And <clears throat> that has to be renewal with Chayas, new energy, and Tainug, and pleasure. And even though the Torah is talking specifically about Bnei Gershon, who were from the tribe of Levi, nevertheless, in future times, all Israel will be elevated to the spiritual plane of Levi, as the Rambam says at the end of Hilcha Shemitah V'yoyvon, that anybody who donates or gives of themselves to remove themselves from the vanities of the world, and dedicate themselves to the service of God, will attain the level of the Levian. So we see that concept of lifting up of the Bnei Gershon <clears throat> and their elevation uh, in time to come. Also in this week's parasha, we have the idea of the Nazir, the Nazarite. There's a fascinating halacha that says that if a person says, Hareini Nazir B'yom Shaben David Barboi, that they take on a vow to become a Nazir on the day the Mashiach comes. Now, although we believe the Mashiach may come any day, we don't know for definite which day he will come. Yet the halacha is asur la that if a person makes such a vow, they become immediately and forever a Nazarite. So we see from here that there is the toikef, the strength of the halacha, that our it's not just an anamuna, a belief in the coming of Mashiach, but this week's parsha, and specifically in the halacha of the Nazir, we have a halacha which tells us that if we talk about the day the Mashiach comes, it actually means today, meaning that Mashiach came, arrived already. And in its spiritual sense, 
through removing ourselves from matters of the world, like the Nazarite does, who removes themselves from grapes, wine, etc., that leads to the, his elevated status. And in general, the whole Sedra talks about the moving of the, the camping and the moving of the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert. And as the Alter Rebbe explains in Likut Torah, in this parsha, the idea of why the tabernacle was built in the desert specifically is because this is the idea that in order to transform a place that no man has ever inhabited, meaning a spiritual wasteland, one must build a tabernacle, a mishkan there, in order to draw down godliness into that place. And that encapsulates the concept of transformation of this world into a Diraloyis Barach, an abode for him, which ultimately which will come to fruition in time to come. So you have everything in this sedra pointing towards that direction. The sedra also gives the derech ho'avoida, the way in which we are to achieve that. And it says it's through minion, through census. The Bnei Gershon were counted. Fascinating when you count people, even the greatest of the great and the smallest of the smallest are no more or less than a single number. And the reason is, is because when we're counting a person, we don't look at their achievements, their knowledge, their wisdom, and so on and so forth. We focus in on their, the essence of their soul, what we call the Yechida Sheva Nefesh, the Yechida Haprotis, the quintessence of their soul, which is equal by everybody. And thereafter, after Parshas Nosso, we come to Parshas Baha in which Aaron Akoyen, he is native as Aneiros, or Madlik as Aneiros. Aaron lights the seven branch menorah, which are the seven branches of different types of Avoida, service of the Bnei Yisrael, and he lights them so that all of them shine brightly, which is the concept of Achdos, the unity, the unity of Matan Torah, the unity of all souls because of their essence. And of course, the essence of their souls is connected with Mashiach, which is connected with the new Torah, which will go out in time to come. That's also emphasized in Pirkei Ovis. In Pirkei Ovis, after Matan Torah, you have a renewed receiver of the Torah, because we just received the Torah, Moshe Kibbal Torah, but you also have a new Torah itself. And at the beginning and at the end of each Perik, we also emphasize this by saying, Kol Yisrael Yeshlehem Chelek Lohelem all Israel have a portion in the world to come. Why all of Israel? Because we look again at the very essence of their souls, the Yechida. And same thing at the end, we say that Torah is not just to learn halacha, but Yagel Torah v'yadir, ultimately Torah can be expounded deeper and deeper, greater revelations of Torah, which again is a reference to the Torah of Mashiach. This, of course, all happens on Shabbos. Shabbos is a day of menucha, a day of tranquility, a day that we sing Mizmo Shilayom HaShabbos, a song which talks and is a glimpse of the time to come, and consequently putting all that together, we've got on Parshas Nosei, when we read the Pirkei Oves, on the day of tranquility of Shabbos, a day that we gather, kihilos, we gather communities together, all of that brought together is the concept that we have a glimpse on this Shabbos of what's going to come in the future, the Torah Chadosh of Mashiach will bring a new reality in the world. And of course, this year, the year Tavshin Nun Aleph, is a year in which, in addition to that which the Talmud says already, Kolo Kola Kitsin, that all the end times for Mashiach have passed. And we've already polished the buttons, as the Friedrich Rebbe said, and we are standing already ready to receive Mashiach. And the words of the Yalkut, which the Persian king and the Arabian king who vie against each other, and Mashiach tells the Jewish people, he gears man gulaschem, the time of your redemption has arrived, that's also happened. It is the most appropriate time, therefore, as we mentioned on Shavuos, 
the be'inan nami lochem, nami lochem is the gematria kates, be'inan is the idea of tefillah ubakosh, as is brought in Sparim. This is the most appropriate time that we should pray and request for the Gula. This Fabrengen, <clears throat> there was in fact two Fabrengens on the Shabbos Parshas Norsei. There was in fact a regular Fabrengen and an additional Fabrengen. This additional Fabrengen, which was held just at the time of Shala Shudas, the reason why it was a second Fabrengen was because the time of Shala Shudas, that is Raiva, the, the whole Raivin, that's the most elevated and greatest and the pinnacle moment of Shabbos, which of course also reflects the time to come. And the Rebbe actually washed and after benching made Havdalah and gave out Koshal Bracha. And he connected this with the idea that when Mashiach will come and will eat the Suda of the Shera Bar of Libyasan, who will actually say Birch HaSamozeh and give Koshal Bracha, this will be David HaMelech himself, David Malka Mashiach. And the Rebbe said that the main thing is HaMaisahu Iker, since on this Shabbos we have an element which is even greater than that of Shavuos, a glimpse of the time to come when a new Torah will go forth and there will be a new reality in heaven and earth, and that's all encapsulated on the day of Shabbos in this particular year. And as emphasized in the parsha and in Pirkei Oves, so therefore, in practical terms, we should all take on an additional level of Torah learning, both in the revealed Torah and also in the Pnimiyas Torah, in Chsidus, especially in a way of Hamidu Talmidim Harbe, of raising many students, and also, especially when we learn Pirkei Avos, not just to read through the entire chapter, but at least to take one Mishnah and to learn it be'iyun in depth with the commentaries. And we pray that through all the above, we will actually merit the coming of David Malka Mashiach, of Melech HaMashiach, who will come miyad mamish in the most literal sense.